Welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio, where we share tried and tested ways to grow your brand and get more customers. Everything from the latest in marketing and branding, right through to growing your team and creating an irresistible culture. Hi, and welcome back to Basic Bananas Radio. Today, I am joined by one of our amazing Clever Bunch members, Anthony Harcher, who runs a company called Me and My Wellness. And Anthony is incredible at helping people unpack, uncover some of the health issues that might be holding us back. And in this episode here, we talk about quantum biology. We talk about the three components of a diet, which are really interesting about light, magnetism, and water. Things that we have, that I actually personally haven't heard about before talking to Anthony today. So this is an amazing episode and I can't wait for you all to hear the wisdom from the healthy man, Anthony Harcher. Let's jump straight in. Hi, and welcome, Anthony. I'm so happy to have you here today. Uh, thank you, Francisca. And I'm so excited to be here. Looking forward to uh, having this discussion with you and the uh, BB Radio listeners. Yeah, same here. And, and I know you're Anthony, the healthy man, Harcher, <laughs> and you really are. You really are. You know, every time I see you here in our community, you just have this vibrancy and, and I don't know how you do it, but you, you're always smiling. You always have a lot of energy, even though you're juggling a lot in the family and business and, and, and creating an, an amazing community around you too. So we'll, we'll get to that. I don't know how you do it, but you, I love, I love that you're here today. And one thing, let's get started with some, a big concept. And then we'll go back into your company to me and my wellness. But we, we talked about before about one of your passions and your, your expertise is in quantum biology. Can yeah. you elaborate on that? What exactly is it and why should we care about it? Absolutely. So the, the quantum realm is below the, uh, I guess, the, the matter of the universe. So uh, we're talking uh, space and we're talking uh, it's pretty much like if you look at anything that we see as matter, it's only 0.000001%. Um, and, and that's what we determine as our reality. But we're, we're missing this opportunity to explore the 99.99999% uh, of, of what we can actually create as our reality. And so this is why I love quantum biology is it's going below the molecular level and looking at all possible realms in terms of uh, how to essentially optimize health for you. And this is an area that I've been really working well with my clients and getting great results is looking below that uh, molecular level or that um, level that we typically look at in medicine and really delving into the quantum realm, which is uh, below that. And, and so this incorporates light, uh, so it's light as medicine, sunlight. It incorporates water. Uh, so this is water, but it's a special understanding of water. It's a new understanding of water. It's it's what we call um, structured water or the fourth phase of water. Uh, so you know most people are familiar with the three phases of water, the solid, liquid, and gas. But now we've uh, discovered the fourth phase of water, which is structured water. And structured water has a massive uh, role in our body and our health. And the other element that I'll discuss is magnetism. So it's light, water, and magnetism. And there's three realms that have really been explored well in traditional medicines, but very much forgotten with conventional medicine. And this is what I see a big movement coming now is getting back into what we understood was naturally good for us and doing more of that. It's so fascinating. I, I love this topic. I, I'm personally, I've been obsessed for a while about quantum physics. So this, you know, this topic just gets me so excited. I would love to to now backtrack quickly and and if you could share a little bit about me and my, my wellness. So how how did you start the the company and why and and what do you exactly help people with? Yeah. So I started the company. It was based on my 
wellness journey. As a little kid, I was very sick and went down the conventional medicine path and just got sicker. And having the absence of health really it was something like you see all the other kids running around and enjoying life and here's me going to hospital going to doctors seeing specialists and 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 I was so young and I just wanted to play with my friends and so having that absence of health really drove this void to wanting to fulfill my health and to empower myself so I went on this journey at a very early age and started educating myself around health and wellness and I was dieting well like sort of eight nine years old um and uh it's probably not uncommon today, but certainly back back in my day, it was very uncommon. And I went down this path of just, just I guess, absorbing all health material. And for me, it was about empowerment. So if I could empower myself and own my health, then I, for me, that was, I guess, what I wanted to achieve in this whole journey. And then I thought, I'd love to do this for others. I, I was thinking how disempowered my mother was just being bounced around from specialist to specialist and and only given one option. And I was thinking my mum would have loved to have some options. And and because obviously just having one option, you've got all the side effects and all the flow on effects. If she had been given a couple of options, she could have, you know, then, you know, explored different pathways. And so that's what I said about doing it was really about empowering and educating my clientele, my customers about the options around that we have, you know, around health and our um, uh, the decisions we can make. And for me, it's personalization. So it very much comes down to that personalized level. And what I do is personalize health for the for what the person wants in terms of what they want to achieve. So whatever they come to me with, I will work with them to achieve that using food, lifestyle and mindset uh, as an approach to really help them achieve results. The mindset I found over the years has been a really important component because often people sort of know what to do, but it's getting started and it's understanding what those blocks are and how to unblock them really empowers the client to move forward. So hence why I have a lot of focus around mindset with my clients. Yeah, I love that. And and obviously, you're also a clinical nutritionist, so you have a lot of tools in your in your tool belt. What are some of the most common challenges that people come to you for? And then what we'll do after is we'll we'll unpack how we entrepreneurs, business owners, you know, people that are sometimes under a lot of pressure can tap into some of these these choices that you talk about food, lifestyle, and mindset. So first up, let's let's have a look at what sort of are the most common challenges people come to you with. De definitely stress. So stress would no doubt be mm -hmm. the underlying driver to most ailments. Uh, no matter what they come to me with, whatever diagnosis, there's a level of stress that's undealt with, unmanaged, whether it be trauma, whether it you know, be PTSD, whether it be chronic anxiety, chronic depression. It is an underlying driver of stress in, in the body that's not being dealt with, causing inflammation and driving a, you know, a, a physical manifestation. So... That's probably the number one thing I work with, and in particular, anxiety. Anxiety is very much prevalent in society, and so people will come to me with complaining about gut disorder and essentially you know, that gut dysfunction. Uh, you know, I can't digest my food. I'm constantly bloated. I'm, you know, feeling nauseated. I'm not going to the toilet, not moving my bowels. I'll typically typically get that, and underlying all of that is stress and anxiety. So. That's, but I, I see all sorts of conditions, um, but primarily what I'm dealing with is helping them manage stress. So, so even stress is even one of the main causes of anxiety. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Interesting. Yeah, so, yeah. so, okay, interesting because let, let's, let's go deeper into, into that then, because I, I do think, you know, you're, you're also in our community in the Clever Bunch and, and we see a lot of business owners that are definitely you know, feeling pretty stretched and overwhelmed. So what are some of the things that we can do to help manage our stress? Because I think sometimes we don't even know. I, I don't even think that I'm stressed, but I must, I mean, I must have levels of stress. I must just maybe ignore it because, you know, the amount of work that we have and juggling kids and things. So I think I'm almost like um, a bit avoidant about it. I'm like, no, I'm not stressed, but there must be levels of stress even in in myself so what what can we do to help with that i find that really fascinating that, that you say that that's pretty much the underlying cause of a lot of our challenges health challenges 
Absolutely, Francisca. And it really starts with what you said is awareness. So most people are unaware. They just think this is normal, that yeah. everyone around them is busy. And so therefore, if I'm busy, I'm just, it's just normal to be busy, 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 busy. But we weren't, we didn't evolve to just be constantly busy. We evolved to obviously hunt and gather food. And, but then after that, sit down, enjoy each other's company, enjoy the food, and then, you know, plan the next day or whatever. But we weren't constantly, constantly busy. Uh, we had downtime and we spent that, you know, with loved ones. And, and, and this is pretty much today. We're just very busy. We, ta- we take on a lot. We get overwhelmed. And it's any time you're feeling overwhelmed is a sign that you've taken on too much uh, and your body's stressed. And, and so that's a good time to think, well, okay, I need to find some, some time for myself. And, and that's what it really comes down to because, you know, there's a lot of people talking about mindfulness and doing meditation and doing ice bars and saunas and, and doing this and this, all these fads. And, and it, that in itself can be overwhelming thinking, I don't have time to, you know, spend half an hour in the sauna or go and find an ice bath or uh, do this or that. And so for me, it's understanding the individual and what they enjoy and getting them to integrate what they enjoy into their day, but not putting it off. It's just making it an appointment with yourself and doing it every day. And that's going to be different for everyone in terms of what brings you fulfillment, what brings you joy. So I'm not sort of going to preach here that, you know, everyone needs to do 10 minutes of mindfulness because people, some people just say, I can't do it. You know, it drives me nuts and it's not for everyone. (laughs) So Um, And and like, so you can get mindful playing sport. And so if that person may love playing sport, so what they should do is play more sport and not worry about having to sit down and meditate or do something like that. So it's really finding out what works for the individual, what they enjoy and make sure they do that every day. And they've, they've got that factored into every week, every month, every quarter, every year. Yeah, yeah, love that. So that's that's part of the the mindset part, and and I like how you say so. Awareness is the first thing, and then pause. You you mentioned that pausing, and even you know one one thing that that we do here in my family that I'm really big on is because we're always busy, and and my partner also runs his own business and um, kids and dogs. So we always at dinner we come together and we sit down together and we eat at the table together with the kids and i feel like that's really important to have that pause together and also for our kids to realize that hey we, we don't need to eat on the go or they need, don't need to eat on their own or you know i see a lot of families and everyone has their own schedule but i see a lot of kids eating on their own and i feel like that's not in my in my you know subjective opinion <laughs> I mean, opinions are subjective. In my opinion, that's for for what I want for my kids. That's not the pause. So, so I, I'm really big on that. So that's mindset. Let's. You also mentioned before. So because you say food, lifestyle, mindset, and you mentioned before when you were a kid, even a nine year old kid, you were dieting or fasting. Maybe you said, or was it dieting? Dieting, I think. Let's talk about that as the second part, I guess, the the food part of our lifestyles. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a significant part, and what I've realised a more important component is getting the light diet right. So it's mm. getting the sunlight uh, exposure right before you're worrying about your diet because it it drives our metabolism. And so if we've got this junk light diet, and what I refer to as a junk light diet is under blue light all day. So all day, all night, you're exposed to blue light. That's sending signals to the body that it's the middle of the day, all day and all night. And the body gets confused. It's thinking, well, I need to be pumping out lots of cortisol, which is a stress hormone. I need to be pumping out lots of insulin. And and then and then our body ends up really dysregulated and doesn't know what to do with the food. And so what we need to do is get our light diet right before we, you know, focus on what we put in our mouths. Because what we put in our mouths is only it's 30, it gives us 30% of our energy, but the other two thirds of our energy come from sunlight, come from what I mentioned, magnetism and water. And so we're missing out on two thirds of our energy by just focusing on food. So in terms of, you know, the, the people want tips on food and, uh, and, and this is, you know, really controversial because there's so many different opinions as to what you should be doing. So like at the moment, there's a strong plant-based movement and at the opposing end, there's a strong carnivore movement, right? So 
eat more meat, you know, eat less meat or, you know, be in the absence of meat. And so there's opposing fields and, you know, both bringing in their, I guess, expertise as to their supportive studies as to what's better for someone. It, it ultimately comes down to the individual and what works best for the individual. And I think uh, part of part of that decision-making process should be, you know, seeking professional help because at the end of the day, if you do go down a path, it, it might not serve you well. And certainly I see a lot of plant-based clients that are very sick. They're not healthy at all. And I can explain why that's the case, but probably don't have time on the BB radio, but uh, certainly um, there is a story behind that. So, um, yeah, so what I really recommend for anyone that wants just a quick tip is get back to the balanced approach. Uh, so not too much, not too little, you know, just a moder- moderate amount and making sure you're, you're having, you're incorporating greens, your vegetables, you got some fruit there, you got, you know, good protein, whatever that protein source is for you, whether you're plant based or animal based. And then, some you know some grains nuts and seeds and ultimately some sort of combination of that's going to best serve you but it's not overdoing it or underdoing it it's you know it's it's finding that right amount for you and that's different for everybody yeah i'd like to unpack actually the a little bit the light diet and how you say it's in fact you know food the actual food that we eat is one part of our diet but then we have sunlight water and magnetism and you know on the i'd like to go into each of these just real briefly but on the on the sunlight one i've i've been listening and i'm sure you're a big uh, fan of andrew huberman too he's a he's a neuroscientist and he talks a lot about you know different things to biohack our our life and one of the shows that i've listened to i think it was a guest actually that he had and this person talked about how the, the light diet too and how in the mornings when we are out, it's actually good in the mornings to go out and about and when we do so to not wear sunglasses for you know a certain amount of time let's say half an hour I'm not sure I don't remember how long and I I really I've taken that on board because every morning I go out either I go for a surf which I don't wear sunglasses anyway or I take the dog for a walk and I try not to wear sunglasses for maybe 10 20 minutes to get the light into my eyeballs which apparently is something that is Good to do. What what else? Quickly on that light diet, water diet, and magnetism. Do you, are you able to unpack a little bit more there? Yeah, a- a- absolutely. So we need the sunlight to uh, really keep us entrained as to where we are. You know what time it is, what season it is, and so our body's picking up these signals on our skin and through our light receptors. Uh, and and we w- we don't want to mismatch. So we don't. And, and the other way in which it picks it up is through food. So we want a you know congruent signal to our body. Otherwise, the misinformation creates inflammation. It creates d- disorder. It, you know, creates a uh, disordered signal in the body. So in order to get that signal right, we need to be eating seasonal foods. Right. So foods that are seasonal is really important because that has the same barcode is what your eye and your skin are seeing on a daily basis and then your body knows where it is it knows the location it knows the time it knows the season and so it knows what to do with that and so in terms of light it's getting natural exposure to the light to the retina and also to our skin so as much skin exposure as we can get but again need to be mindful that we don't overdo it because uh, people can just go from one extreme to the other and we don't want that. We, we, we just want what you mentioned in the newsletter is consistently. So, and, and, and it's starting small, getting some morning light and being consistent with morning light every day, just like you're doing, and then we build on that and we build slowly and our body has a natural perf- uh, defence mechanism against the harsh radiation of the midday sun. But... It, we need to build up its tolerance. We need to build up that protection. Mm-hmm. And so the best tip for sunlight is to do what you're doing, get up, sunrise, get the morning light and and, and be consistent with that and do it every day. Uh, and if you miss a day, just get on board the next day, but be very consistent with morning light. Um, in terms of water, it's drinking uh, filtered water, uh, absent of flor- fluorine and chlorine. Uh, fluorine mm-hmm. and chlorine will strip us of energy. Uh, so we don't want that. Um, we, we So we want to make sure we're drinking filtered water and just drinking as we need 
uh, not focusing on two liters a day. It's focusing on what our body's telling us. If we're thirsty, have a drink. If you're not yeah. thirsty, you don't need to drink. And so don't overdo the water because we, I think some of us are overdoing the water. And mm-hmm. I, 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 I certainly got caught out there. I was overdoing the water and it was actually causing high blood pressure and it was causing me to stay up all night ur- ur- urinating. It was affecting my sleep and it was just terrible. So mm-hmm. I've addressed that now by just, you know, dialing down the water. Um, in terms of magnetism, it's bare feet on the ground, whether you in a park or you're mm-hmm. on the sand, it's connecting with earth. And we get, we get energy from connecting with the earth. So if you want to eat less, what I suggest you do is do more barefoot walking on the ground and on and in the, the parks and you won't feel hungry. Uh, or go down the beach, mm-hmm. hang out at the beach in outdoor space and you won't feel hungry because what we're doing is we're actually getting energy from the environment and that energy is being, um, I guess, charged up by the sun. So our, the sun is our, our ba- battery charger. We build our battery from grounding and through s- swimming, like what you do in the surf, swimming in natural body waters. So whether it be the ocean, lakes or rivers, the more we swim in these places, we gather electrons. And and then what the sun does is charge our batteries. And so we can get more energy by eating less. Um, and and, and it, it's, it's really incredible. Like I find it's the greatest intermittent fasting hack you'll ever hear is if you're struggling doing intermittent fasting, just spend more time outdoors and it'll be so easy. You'll, you'll find you'll be able to go 24 hours without eating. Um, so it's because we're indoors so much and we're not, we're not charging up our batteries from the sun. We're not, uh, re- you know, replenishing our batteries from walking on, you know, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, you know, and, and we're not spending enough time outdoors. That is just such a, a cool hack that we all can do. And, I mean, I'm a, a big a fan of bare, being barefoot. I'm pretty much always barefoot, even though I do have a lot of heels that I don't wear. <laughs> My cupboard is full of uh, really beautiful shoes that I don't wear, <laughs> except when I you know, have a speaking engagement. And so I love that. I, I actually have never heard that. I have never heard about the, that, you know, the magnetism of the earth and walking barefoot on the ground, sand floors, on, on the, in the park is charging our batteries and actually almost suppresses hunger feelings that is that is just incredible to hear i love that and i i could talk to you forever and ever and ever this stuff is so fascinating and so helpful for our listeners is there anything else that i didn't ask you that you feel like we should have a quick chat about before we wrap up yeah, just for the business owners i think it comes down to prioritization like business owners are really busy they're growing a business they've got demands they, they've got to meet cash flow otherwise you know they don't have a business they can't feed their family and so they're They're very busy. They're very stressed. And I think for business owners, in order to grow and and have business success, you also need to be investing in your health at the same time. And so it's not putting off your health and thinking, I'll do health once I've got my business to a certain level, because what you might find is you get your business to a certain level, you're getting a, a great big income, but you can't enjoy it because you're so sick. So don't sacrifice your wealth for your health. And and or sacrifice your health for your wealth. Um, so inc- just build slowly. And, and I think so the tip for the business owners is start very small. And it could be just getting up, going outside, watching sunrise, and then you can get on with your day. That could be the thing that you implement for that month. And then get that as a habit. And then once you've that's ingrained as a habit, then what's your next thing? It could be focusing on tweaking your diet, or it could be um, maybe spending more time with loved ones or something like that. But just build up slowly, incrementally, but make sure you're always doing something about your health because otherwise it will catch up on you and your business will actually stagnate. Um, so if you want to mm-hmm. keep, yeah, you've you got to keep growing yourself with your business in order for it to flourish and you to flourish. Yeah, it's that's such important knowledge to to keep reminding ourselves because usually we you know, we're healthy and then we're like, yeah, we're all good, you know, keep working. And we neglect maybe the other parts of our lives, like the the diet, the food, lifestyle and mindset until we get sick. And then when we're sick, we're like, oh, wait a second, no, I can't work. And so I really love that. I feel like that, that consistency that we talked about, you know, at Basic Runners in the newsletter, 
it's really important to do that with our life too and with our health. So this has been so good. And I would love for our listeners to be able to connect with you. Where is the best place to connect with you on LinkedIn or your website? Where would you like people to connect? I connect on LinkedIn. I think it's a great professional way of uh, connecting. I appreciate connections on LinkedIn. So yeah, please uh, connect with me, Anthony Harcher. And uh, yeah, I look forward to you know, nourishing a relationship with you and uh, helping uh, you achieve your goals. Love that. We'll post the link for your LinkedIn in the uh in the show notes and also the website me and my wellness.com.au anyone can check that out too to also see what you're up to and what you're working on so thank you again so much Anthony this has been super helpful and I I think that our listeners are really going to love this slightly different episode normally we talk about marketing and growing a business but as you say without health we can't really grow a business so really helpful thank you so much again for tuning in today for you, Anthony, for joining us, for our listeners, for listening. And as always, if you love this show, you're welcome to share it with your friends and also hit the subscribe button if you want to leave us a review. We really appreciate those too. We we actually, we share them with the team. Every time we get a review, we share them and we have a little, uh, on our Google chat, we have a little celebration. So really appreciate you all for doing that. So thanks again and I'll see you next time. Thank you. To get more from Basic Bananas and to learn new ways to grow your business with clever marketing, visit basicbananas.com.